How you guys doing? Cut my hand earlier today digging around the toolbox for something. Gashed it pretty deep. But I got electrical tape and uh, paper towel on it, so we're good. Okay, so today I want to talk about what some consider to be kind of a controversial topic. Uh, I don't think it should be, but uh, I want to talk about body armor. Now, I'm not talking about the drink, even though that's a good beverage. What I'm talking about is actually armor that you wear, as like, like this right here. Uh, now, before you click off this video, if you are not into body armor, you don't care about it, uh, you're anti-gun maybe, you don't like guns, um, a lot of people associate body armor with firearms because what body armor is specifically designed to do is protect you from an impact from a bullet. Before you click off the video and say this is not for me, wait to hear what I have to say because it could be for you. Uh, body armor, as we know, was developed to stop stop you from dying if you get hit with a bullet in the area that's covered in body armor. Uh, if you are someone who is anti-gun or is scared of firearms, then maybe body armor actually is for you. Uh, you might be saying that's like gun nut stuff, that's, that's malicious stuff, that's, you know, whatever. But in reality, it is some of the best protection from an active shooter that you can obtain legally, mind you. In, I think, all 50 states, maybe 49 states, as long as you're not a felon, you can buy body armor, have it shipped right to your front door. I have two kinds of armor inside these vests. Uh, one of them is steel plate armor from a company called AR500armor.com, I think it is, uh, it's Armor Republic. And the other, they're HESCO ceramic plates. Uh, both of these are rifle rated, both sets are rifle rated, and um, I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of each set. So, the first thing we're gonna do is go over the steel body armor, which is right here. Uh, the steel body armor, we're going to list the pros and the cons of steel body armor, and then we're going to go over and list the pros and the cons of ceramic body armor. Uh, they're going to be a little bit different, and everything I talk about in this video is my opinion. Okay, it is not fact, it is my opinion. Take it as you will. I just want to relay some information to you guys on if you are, are making a choice to buy body armor. So, body armor is becoming vastly popular in the United States for civilians to buy and own because of, let's face it, uncertain times, all right? Whether you are a prepper or whether you uh, are worried about civil unrest or you're just worried about home invasion, anything really going out if you're scared or you just want to be protected. Um, the reason why I bought and own body armor, there are a couple, there are a couple things. Uh, I bought it because number one, you can buy the stuff, okay? I can legally buy body armor and own it. And I said, why not? Do I ever think I'm gonna use body armor in a real life scenario? I will probably never be in a gunfight. I'm not military, I'm not law enforcement. Um, I don't go out looking for trouble. I'm a pretty peaceful guy. Uh, I just bought body armor because of, like I said, I can buy body armor, so why not? I, I, I think body armor is a pretty cool thing to own. I like the idea of having something that is bulletproof. You know, uh, this may sound immature and stupid, but you know, ever since I was a kid, I'm sure many of you dreamed about being a superhero. A uh, Superman could s stand in front of someone shooting a gun at him and nothing's gonna happen to him, you know? And uh, I just thought it was, you know, growing, going into an adult, this is the closest thing that you can get to becoming bulletproof pretty much, right? So of course it only covers your vital areas right here on the chest, so you can still get shot anywhere else, you know? But um, I just think that it's a really cool thing. I've always been fascinated with, with bulletproof vests and armor and stuff like that. So it makes sense that uh, now that I'm an adult, I can buy the stuff. Number two, the reason why I have it is in case something does happen. Okay, uh, I don't have a, a magic magic uh, crystal ball. I can't predict what's going to happen in the future. You know, I don't think that it's going to get to the point where we are in war in the United States. I know a lot of people 
think that that's going to happen. I don't think that in my lifetime I'm going to see an apocalyptic situation. Uh, there are some people that believe it's coming, but I don't think so. However, if it does come, I have this. Now, this is the interesting part about this stuff. You buy this for protection. You buy body armor for protection, right? And in order for this to be useful, you have to be wearing it in an active shooter type of situation, right? You have to have it on your body. Now, these things pretty much live in my closet, okay? So if I'm, I'm, I'm not wearing uh, a vest like this to the grocery store or to the gas station or walking around in public, okay? This stuff is like bug out situation kind of, kind of stuff. Um, so if I was ever in a situation where, where someone was shooting at me, I probably wouldn't even have this stuff uh, on my body or even within my vicinity, you know? But regardless, I was allowed to buy it, so I bought it. Uh, now, there are different kinds of plate carriers. That's what this is called, a plate carrier. There are different kinds of plate carriers. Again, this is more of like a, a militaristic style plate carrier, big, bulky, has a lot of padding on it. You can get minimalist ones that you can wear underneath, say, a sweatshirt or, or a jacket or something like that. And then, yeah, you could go out to the grocery store. You could go out to, to, to the park or to wherever without looking like an idiot. <laughs> you know, you hide it underneath your clothing. And then, yeah, you are protected at all times. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, but the third reason why I bought body armor was because not necessarily that I'm ever going to need it, but they keep talking about banning body armor for civilians. Okay. And I think that if that ever does happen, this stuff is going to be worth a lot of money. Okay. Now I wouldn't get rich off of just having two plate carrier setups, but you know, it's, it's, it's something that will go up in value if that happens. And if I don't want to sell it in, in that time, then I will have something cool that you can't just buy anymore. So I just think that it's it's something, no, I don't look at it as an investment, but I just think that it's something cool to have, right? So, hey, why not? All right, let's run down the cons of steel armor, okay? So steel armor, if you guys don't know, it's literally a piece of steel in here. It's a piece of what's called AR-500 steel. It's a hardened steel. And uh, a lot of people use AR-500 steel targets at the shooting range to shoot, shoot their guns at. Now this armor is what's called level three plus, okay? So this will stop anything that is a handgun. And this will also stop certain rifle rounds. Uh, if you don't know about armor, what defeats armor is speed. So if you have something traveling at a very high velocity, that's what penetrates armor. That's what defeats armor. So this is, says right here, it's rated for 3,100 feet per second out of a 5.56 round, or typically an AR-15 is what people would think of. So 3,100 feet per second is moving. That's fast. That would be like an XM-193 round. A lot of rounds do not travel that fast. That is uh, at the top end of what a civilian would probably own in terms of speed of a round coming out of a gun. There is There are different variants of body armor that can stop different things. So if you got level three body armor, uh, which you can also get in a steel plate or different versions, uh, maybe not steel, you can get them in a Kevlar, stuff like that. There are, so level three will stop some rifles, mostly handguns, you know, stuff like that. The higher the level of the armor is, the more expensive it'll be, okay? So we're gonna talk about a big con. Uh, there are a few cons of owning steel body armor, and we're gonna go through those right now. The first con in owning steel body armor is, uh, this seems to be the biggest issue that people have with it, is spalling. So if you don't know what spalling is, spalling is where a bullet hits your armor and the bullet has to go somewhere. This does not absorb impact from a bullet. It stops it dead on. So when the bullet hits this going 2,500, 3,000 feet per second, what happens to that bullet? It has to go somewhere. So the bullet basically explodes outwards and spalling, it's kind of similar to a shrapnel, comes flying off the plate, deflecting off, and the spalling can go up into your, your jugular, in your nose, your eyes, it can come out into your arms, it can shoot down into your groin or your legs, Bad news stuff. You could bleed out and die. You could be severely injured, wounded. You could lose an eye. All bad stuff. So a lot of people don't like steel armor because of that. Now, what 
companies like AR500 have done, they put what's called spall coating on. Okay, this is really thick. You can see, you can actually see the steel plate right here and there's a line. See that line right there? And the rest of that is coating. This is all coating, it's called a Paxton coating, I believe. Uh, a lot of people think that it's truck bed liner. It is not, it is something different. That's a misconception. This is a specially formulated coating for spalling. Now, there's also controversy saying that, yeah, that stuff doesn't work. It's a gimmick, it's snake oil. The anti-spall coating is garbage. Here's the deal. Here's what I have, after months and months of research, watching videos, reading articles, talking to people, being on all the forums, all the Facebook pages, everything, and really looking at like every single piece of information out there about this kind of coating, here's what I have determined. If you buy these kind of plates and you put them on and you get shot with them, the, the spalling liner will be good for at least one shot. Now what happens when a, a, a bullet hits this with a spall liner on it? This coating catches the spalling. Okay, the bullet goes in past the coating, and when it hits the plate and explodes outwards, it gets caught inside of this coating, and it does not come out and hit you all over the place, okay? So what I have determined is you're good for one shot at minimum, okay? After that, all bets are kind of off. It also depends on the kind of the caliber of the round, I've noticed. So there's many videos out there of this spall coating blowing right off the plate, completely shearing off, revealing solid steel plate underneath. But what I've noticed is it's always after the first round. It's always the second round or beyond. So you got at least one good round to take with this. And my theory behind this is if you get shot by something, if you get shot by someone, you're not gonna stand around and take more shots. You're probably gonna duck and get out of there as fast as you can, right? So I have seen these, the spall lining work for multiple shots. Uh, I think one guy's video, he had eight or nine shots on it before spalling started coming off, uh, either out of here or this started splitting. So uh, you, have, you have at least one shot in you where this will deflect, however, if you're still worried about that, you can get something called a spall bag. This is, this is a spall bag, and I have these two. On top of getting the thick spall coating, I have a spall bag. If you have bare metal plates without this Paxton coating on them, you definitely need to get these. This is this what this does is the, the plate goes inside of this bag. Hold on one second. And this bag. The plate goes in like that, and there's Velcro all around, and you, you close it up, and this has Kevlar all inside of it. This is layered up with Kevlar inside, and these, I've watched a lot of videos on these, independent testing from just normal people like me, and these seem to work pretty darn good. Also, it has a trauma pad built into the back of it. Okay, see how thick this is? This is a trauma pad. What a trauma pad is, when you take an impact from a bullet, there's a lot of energy flying. This is literally a special kind of padding that absorbs impact, so you don't feel it as much. Uh, I've never been shot wearing armor, but even with a trauma pad, I imagine it hurts pretty bad. Another con about steel armor is the weight, okay? A lot of people don't like steel armor because it's heavy, and you know what? It is heavy. It is considerably more heavy than my ceramic plates, okay? Each one of these plates is around 10 pounds or just over 10 pounds. I have two plates, front plate, back plate. So that's 20 pounds, not including the spall bags, not including the vest, not including any ammo loadout I have or anything like that. So it doesn't sound like a lot. Yeah, 20 plus pounds. Anya doesn't seem like that much. <sighs> Wearing it for a while, you feel it. So if you have a set of steel plates, I suggest you either be a little bit of a bigger frame that could carry some weight around or, or be in shape because I'll tell you what, man, you can definitely feel this on you. So the plate carrier, the way you load it is, it just goes right into this pouch right here. This plate carrier sometimes is kind of hard to get it in, tight squeeze, but it goes just like that. And then we're going to cinch it up with some of the straps inside of it like that and we fold this over boom and there it is just like that 
Okay? So let's drop this. Drop it like it's hot. It goes on like that, okay? Then you put the buckles on or whatever you gotta do, and you have some armor. Very good, I'm good to go right here. You wanna keep it, the top of the plate right, right below or right at the sternum, and you want the bottom of the plate to be just above your belly button. Now I'm a tall guy, so this is, my belly button's down here. But what you're basically trying to do is is guard the vitals. You know, your heart, your lungs, stuff like that, okay? You don't want that to get hit because if you take a bullet around to the, to the arm or to the stomach or to the leg or whatever, you can still potentially walk away from that, go get medical treatment and be okay. If you take a round to the heart, to the lungs, that's very vital organs and you could easily die. So let's talk about the pros of steel armor, okay? Now that we got the negatives out of the way. And there are a few more negatives. Uh, nothing that really I wanna touch on because I just brought up the, the major points that people have against steel armor. Uh, but the pros of steel armor are pretty good too. So a great thing about steel armor and the number one thing that people like about it is it's affordable, okay? Now, there's a little catch right there when I say affordable though. It's affordable as in the steel plate itself is pretty inexpensive. You can pick a steel plate up uh, three plus, so that's rifle rated. You can pick one of those plates up for like under a hundred bucks, okay? Um, that's pretty good, but you put on the spall liner, so this is the, where the um, comes in. You put on the spall liner, uh, the, the Paxton liner, and then you're adding another something like 50 bucks to the plate or 40 bucks to the plate. I don't know. And then I personally would not run it without uh, anti-spall bag, and that's 36 bucks for one of those. So, so you're starting to come in around where you can get a ceramic plate for. But there's other good things about having steel plates. For one, they don't go bad. What do I mean by going bad? Well, ceramic plates have a shelf life. Okay, and the reason why they have a shelf life is because they're literally made uh, with ceramic inside of them. And at, over time, if you wear the, the, the armor a lot and you're moving around a lot, getting in and out of cars, doing operations, whatever you're doing, the ceramic will start to degrade. So they have a shelf life. On the ceramic plates, it says five year shelf life. Uh, however, uh, you can get a lot more out of that, I believe, because uh, of course I'm not an operator, law enforcement. I'm not law enforcement, like I said. So I'm not wearing this stuff. I barely ever wear this stuff. It hangs in my closet, right? So if it's just hanging there, it's not going to go bad. Uh, it goes bad by wearing it and by moving around in it and by bumping into stuff and rubbing up on stuff and you know things like that. So I'm not really worried about the shelf life of it, but some somebody will. Steel does not have that problem because it's literally a slab of steel. It doesn't, it, it's not gonna go bad. Uh, another thing that I do like about steel plates is they can take multiple hits. Now, you gotta balance out with the spalling issue or whatever, but uh, my ceramic plates are rated for six hits. Uh, they're rated for six shots. Uh, I don't think I'll even get shot once in them, and if I do, it'll probably only be one time <laughs> if that ever occurs. But the ceramic plates are only rated for six shots because the ceramic, when a bullet hits it, it blasts the ceramic apart and the ceramic catches the bullet and that area where the ceramic is caught is now compromised. If you get shot in the exact same spot, it'll probably go through and kill you or wound you severely. Steel plates can get shot multiple times. I've, been, I've watched videos of guys shooting these things like dumping 100 rounds into a steel plate and it doesn't even leave a dent, okay? AR-500 steel plates, when you set them out for targets, you look at them, I have some in my truck right now. I've been shooting them all summer and they there's not a dent on them. You can see all the impact marks from all the bullets, but they're not dented, they're not destroyed, nothing. So these do last a lot longer, okay? So you're talking about cost, the, uh, the way they last, um, the way you store these. So ceramic plates should be stored hanging in the vest like this, okay, in a, in a closet. Steel plates, it doesn't matter. I could take these plates and I could just Throw them on the ground. It doesn't matter. It's fine. They're steel plates. Who cares, right? All right, so let's talk about ceramic. These are Hesco ceramic plates, and these uh, are rifle rated. Uh, so they are the special threat plates, and they can handle pretty much what the steel plates can handle. A con of ceramic is it's generally more expensive. Okay, so if price point is a consideration, then maybe steel's the way to go. However, if you outfit the steel plates like I do, 
it's about the same price as a ceramic plate. And you don't need to outfit the ceramic plate with all sorts of anti-spall coating or anything like that. The reason why is because when a bullet hits ceramic, the ceramic breaks and it catches the bullet. And the back will have what's called back face deformation. It'll balloon out like this and the bullet will be caught and trapped inside there in, versus the steel plate where the bullet bounces off the steel plate into a million pieces. Um, ceramic plates, number two, uh, a con for ceramic plates is you can't just do anything you want with these. You have to store them a certain way. You do not want to drop these because again, it is a ceramic plate inside of here. And if you drop it, it could crack. Uh, the shelf life is not as long on these as a steel plate would be. Uh, but like I said before, I think that's, uh, that's not really a consideration for me since I'm not wearing them every day. Now, ceramic plates also fit like this. These seem to be a tiny bit smaller than my steel plates. I think this is, would be considered maybe a swimmer's cut or a shooter's cut. I'm not sure. It angles up. I know my steel plates come out more and then angle up. These angle up further so they're there they still fit from the middle of my collarbone to my belly button eh, they're a little shorter a little shorter i'm a big dude though i'm a big guy i'm six foot five 300 pounds uh nipple to nipple so the positives of ceramic armor ceramic armor is considered to be a better some of the best armor on the planet hesco is a reputable brand uh, they make a lot of stuff for the United States military and a lot of stuff for government. Um, the pros of having ceramic armor is the biggest one in my mind, it's lightweight. So this is, I mean, it's not exactly light, but it's way lighter than that stuff. Um, I don't know how much this weighs. It's gotta be half the weight of the steel plates. Okay. So it's a lot lighter. Um, I feel like ceramic is just better all around at stopping a bullet. Uh, if someone was shooting a high powered round at me, I would honestly rather be wearing a ceramic plate than a steel plate. Now what I was talking about before with the back face deformation, you have to wear trauma pads behind this. This is uh, by Tactical Scorpion. Uh, I don't know how good or how bad Tactical Scorpion is. I don't really have an opinion on them, but it's nevertheless, it's a trauma pad that fits in the back. It's a little bit bigger than the plate itself, but that's okay. And this will sit and help absorb the impact. Now, if you watch ballistic testing on ceramic plates and they have them up against the clay or ballistics gel and they shoot it and you see in slow motion the deformation that comes out of the back, Man, I do not want to get hit with a round wearing one of these. Uh, I believe it will stop it equally, if not better than a steel plate, but it's going to break some ribs. It's going to punch you like a brick hitting you, okay? But you get the trauma pad on there, you try to reduce that a little bit. Whether you can or you can't, I don't know. I've never been shot. I don't ever want to be shot wearing armor or not, especially not wearing armor. Now, another thing to consider with armor is these HESCOs, they say right on this, this garment is rated only for ballistic threat, stated above. It is not intended to protect against sharp edged or pointed instruments, such as a knife. Uh, I don't think you're going to get a knife through this if someone tries stabbing you. However, it's not designed for that. Whereas the steel plates also are not designed for knife threats, but you're definitely not getting a knife through that steel plate, no matter how hard you try stabbing someone with, with that on. Uh, so take that into consideration. Uh, but I don't think anyone buys these ceramic or steel plates to, to guard from knife attacks. Uh, their, their main purpose, both of them, is threat against firearms. I'm going to have my son Maxwell demonstrate what it looks like to wear a plate carrier on a child. He's wearing the ceramic plates right now, and he's wearing them pretty much with ease. So as you can see, he's about four feet tall, and these he's wearing the ceramic plates. Turn around. Turn around. Let's see the back. I mean, we, we should adjust the straps a little bit because it's uh, hanging a little low on him. But, all right, turn back around. <clears throat> as you can see, he's wearing them no problem, okay? So... Even a child can wear ceramic plates. Now, the steel plates are a little bit heavier. You, have you worn the steel plates before? No. Uh, let's put the steel plates on you and see how you feel and get your opinion on them. All right, so these are the steel plates on Maxwell. How do... Uh, it hurts. It hurts? Why, where does it hurt? I got in the shoulders. Why? 
Because it's so heavy. Right, exactly. So Ow. that is Ow. my point with the steel plates. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Right, they are they are really heavy. Now, of course, I have the mag pouches with uh, ammunition in them, so it makes it a little heavier. But that is, uh, it's still a lot. The plates themselves are, are way heavier. Oh, that one's empty. We shot that one. The plates are a lot heavier than the uh, the ceramic plates. What do you think, Max? What would you rather wear, the ceramics or the steels? I'd wear that one. Why? It's lighter. <laughs> So there you have it, out of the mouth of babes. Maxwell would rather run ceramics than steel plates. Uh, now, that is something to consider, the weight of the plates, uh, and he would choose ceramics strictly for the weight savings. Uh, and that is very important because if you have to run around, if you're in a situation where you have to wear armor and you're out there running around doing whatever you need to do you need to be able to not be fatigued and tired you need to be able to perform uh, at your top level especially if you're in a situation where you're wearing something like that's requiring you to wear something like this you need to be able to move and run and uh, go in and out of buildings and vehicles or whatever you need to do uh, so you know he likes the ceramics me I would prefer the ceramics because of the weight savings, but I would wear either one. I'm a big guy, I'm pretty strong. Um, I do like them both equally. I know that a lot of people uh, will run one or the other and they will defend whatever they like viciously. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong as long as you outfit yourself up correctly. That's basically armor in a nutshell, hard armor. Uh, as we call it. There are different types of armor. There's uh, soft armor, which is rated for handgun calibers. And there's also different types of armor rated for stab threats. There is a lightweight armor that's relatively new on the market. It's made out of some sort of plastic. Uh, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's so light that it floats on water. And I think, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, but I think you can get that in a level four rating which is uh, rifle rated as well. So if you're thinking about buying armor uh, and you are in the market for it, and I think everyone should be in the market for it, no matter who you are, uh, the people who love guns, the people who hate guns, the people who want to be protected, the people who would just like to buy it just to buy it because they can. I think everyone should own body armor. I think that it's a great thing. Uh, also, what I wanted to touch on real quick is real life practical situation that I would use this for, and I do use it for, is when I go shooting. Okay, so uh, it's just an added layer of safety when I go shooting. So when you're at the range, when other people are handling firearms around you, when you're shooting at something, say, steel targets, if they're not set up correctly at a 20% angle aimed down towards the ground uh, you know or they're a little bit closer than you're supposed to be to them uh this could come in handy because i have had incidents incidences where i'm shooting in an outdoor range and i'm shooting at steel targets and whoever set them up didn't set them up correctly and i'm hearing i'm shooting and i'm hearing bullets fly over my head ricochets and that is scary as hell now the last thing i want to say about all types of body armor, you always get the people that say that is pointless to have because what if you're in a conflict and someone just shoots you in the head? Well, you know what? That could very well happen. You could be somewhere and you could die because someone shoots you in the face. I mean, even if someone shot you in the belly where the armor doesn't protect, you could still die from that too. You know, but these are all what ifs. You can say this about anything. And the point I'm trying to make here is you can say, hey, I'm driving, my vehicle I drive is an M1 Abram army tank. And someone could say, hey, man, you know, a fighter jet could come right out of the sky and blow it up, man. So what's the point in driving an army tank, right? The point in having armor is to help protect you. It's not a force field. It's not, it's not guaranteed to protect you, but having an extra layer of protection around your vital organs it, right here is something that I would rather have than not have if I was involved in some kind of shooting or conflict, okay? So, all you beautiful people out there, 
you can go on online and order your arm and have it delivered right to your doorstep. So this company, the AR500 Armor, Armored Republic, the website is ar500armor.com. You can go order your plates. The owner's name is Tyler. Uh, he's a really cool guy, really nice guy. And I'm glad his company is around because it's getting armor into the hands of a lot of people. And I think everyone should own armor. That's where I got this. There's also other, other companies like Spartan Armor and Tactical Scorpion and stuff like that. But if I was to get steel armor, I would go to AR500. That's what I would buy. And then in here, we have the Hesco Ceramic Armor. And you go on Hesco's website, hesco.com, and you can order it. These are the L210 Special Threat Rating, which is rifle rated. Um, you can get various levels of, of this ceramic armor, different thicknesses for different kinds of, of calibers. I think all of you people should go out there and buy armor, or at least think about it and don't wait too long because who knows what the future holds you know you want to be safe you want to be smart if you got a little bit of extra cash go get yourself some armor at least you can wear it to the shooting range and look tactical, cool right <laughs> this is big kyle coming at you straight from michigan and i'll talk to you people later peace